What? Nothing. Are we live? No. Yeah. Oh, hi. Hello. <laughs> Welcome to episode number 186 of Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes. I'm Patricia Steer. And I'm Mark Sargent. And we're both sharing my microphone. So those in the live chat watching this today on the 13th of September, 2017, let us know if you can hear us or if we can have to get closer or if it's right or not right. So give me a thumbs up in the live chat if our sound quality is okay. Mark, you speak a little. If I talk this far away, can people hear me? I think my voice projects better than Patricia's. What? What? I'm, what? I'm just I'm saying you have in, a quiet, more lilting voice. I'm looking in the live chat and I want somebody to... Uh, oh, people. that's the live chat over there? Yeah, I have it on my phone. Oh, it's awesome. Isn't the it? fonts can always be that small? Well... You should start wearing one contact and one eye like I do. <laughs> Everyone's saying it sounds good. So oh, hello. Good. All all right. Right. Hello. I'm waving over here to the uh, cell phone, which is right here on a little stand. Also in the room with us is Daniel J. Clark. You have met him before on various Flat Earth and Other Hot Potato shows. He is a, I guess, filmmaker, film producer, director. He's doing it all. He's filming a documentary and... Uh, here he is now. Come over a little bit more. <laughs> so it's not just, there he is. Daniel's a real person. You should look him up. Do research <laughs> on him. And then email him or make videos. <laughs> Daniel Clark is his name. But he's really great. Oh, sorry, out of Los Angeles. Yeah, he's a really great guy. And um, we've met a couple of times now. And I mean, two different sets of dates, but several days. And spending time with you is really a pleasure, Daniel. And I wish that you lived closer to me. <laughs> no, I do really. I don't mean that in a weird way. I mean that in a like, it would be cool to hang that's out with. That's because he has a camera. And <laughs> that's funny. I wish you lived farther. <laughs> <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. uh, well, let's see. The Secret Show is very uh, uh, live chat um, heavy. Uh, heavy. So if there's anything you want to ask or anything you want to say, put it in the live chat and we'll try to address it. We went to, yeah, there might be a slight echo. I'm not quite sure why. But it might be because we're speaking so far away from the mic. So we'll try to do this. Really? Who knows? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if I want to lean in with these sort of legs. Why? I'm more of a low light kind of guy. <laughs> My brother doesn't like bright lights. He unscrews light bulbs in his bathroom even and puts very low wattage bulbs in. Really? Yeah, he doesn't like bright lights. Wow. I don't know why. Well, it could be a re reverse vampire. No, and it also could be the older you get, the more we all don't like bright lights. <laughs> And yet, here we are. Well, you have to be brightly lit. In a big studio. I'm oh, sorry. I was going to say studio. I didn't it is mean a studio. studio. Well, it is. It's my home studio. Right. It's purpose. There aren't guys out there. I mean, yeah, Daniel's over there, but we have to ignore guys like Mike and Gary and Rich. Hey, Rich, thumbs up. Aren't there any women here? Just men? Heavy lifting cameras. Oh, well, there's that woman over there with a the clipboard. Okay. Well, going over right. lines. Um, let's see. Someone's asking <laughs> <laughs> where the Croatian girl is, our daughter. Uh, it's a long story. Somewhat long, tragic. Slow winter story yeah. about her daughter. <laughs> anyway, you've got a drink. You I do have a drink. You made yourself a drink from the bar. What'd, I, you, what'd you do? I'd like to say this was just Tang, but it's not. It's a screwdriver. But it's organic orange juice and nice vodka, right? It is. It's Russian vodka, uh -huh. of course. <laughs> and uh, organic orange juice. Very good. Very is tasty. It? Yeah. It's one of the best screwdrivers I've ever had. All right. Probably because you made it. And yes, it's helping gonna help me get through this show. <laughs> and by that I mean be this close to you the entire time. Boy, you're small. You're tiny. Yeah, kinda. Yeah. Wait, let's see. Put your hand around my wrist. Oh well, like that. Yeah. Right. Kind of looks like you're, you're like huge compared. <laughs> but my hands are very long. Let's yeah. try that measuring. Well, that's different. Yeah, your hands unsurprisingly, they're pretty darn close. Yes. Yeah, seriously, you have extremely long All right, long then fingers. let's do the test of finger length. Oh, right. What is that? The, I don't um, know. Okay, so. So. Now, so let's see. In descending order, the longest for me is the middle finger. Right. Okay, and you? You know. The I, longest I, for you is the middle finger. Yes. Now. Your first finger, the pointer finger, is it longer or shorter than your third finger? No, no, wait. <laughs> Stop. It is longer. It your, is just a hair longer. Yeah, minus just a hair two. Longer. So what does this mean? I have no idea. You're supposed the one to that mean something. Up. So many tests. 
We did a really fun we test We did a fun today. test earlier. <laughs> Are we able to replicate it in this room? No, 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 because we'd have to put our heads against those records. That's okay, not let's explain happen. the test. You explain uh, The it. test is... Uh, well, come closer, sir. Oh, I'm sorry. And I'll look in the live chat. The, the test is whether you, you want to test... There's a test that women can do that men can't. Yay, and women. You, right, exactly. <laughs> Yay, women. We so can do everything you, and you can. Whatever. We run this place. Oh, my God. Just I, joking. Are there any blunt instruments around here? <laughs> <laughs> Today's word boys and girls is blunt force trauma, <laughs> followed shortly by medically induced coma. <laughs> All right. So the, the test is you place yourself away from the wall where here's the wall. Your head would be here, right? You place your head against the wall and your feet on the floor and you put a chair, it doesn't have to be heavy at all, a light chair underneath you, and you try to stand up, just stand up holding the chair. The chair can be two pounds, three pounds, doesn't make any difference. And what they're saying is the center of gravity for women is slightly different than the center of gravity for men. So me as a guy, I sat next to the wall, I had my head on it, and even without the chair. Show I, the body position. I mean, I don't know. Just do the, an example the, the, because it's so hard to use a verbal explanation. Oh, jeez. No, just do the 90 degree angle. Well, yeah. This is the wall. So, yeah, this is the wall. This is where your head would be. Right? Your, your legs are locked and straight. They're locked and straight. You can't, you can't lift your heels up and you have to lift up with the chair. And I couldn't even lift up without the chair. It's amazing. It's a center of gravity thing. You can feel it. It has nothing to do with strength. But men always think, oh, it's strength. It's not strength. It's it's center of gravity. Women can do it, and it's not 100%, 100% of the time, but it's like a 98% test. And you can feel the shift, in, and you have to, the, here's the key. Your feet have to be at least 32 inches away from the wall. They'd like to be 36, but you want to be at a 90-degree angle. If your feet are too close, you're going to be able to stand up. It's like, I can do the test. No, you can't do the test. So if your feet are far enough, and again, you can test it. In fact, we had Daniel do it where his feet moved closer and further away. And once he got close enough, he could do it. But once his feet were further enough away, you can't. But when, here's the difference. Men really have to struggle. Again, it's not a strength thing. They're trying to get their set, their balance, and they can't do it. Women have a different center of gravity. So Patricia was like, Bleak. what's the big deal? But it one. did take me a while Where to, are my figure cats? Out, to figure out how to do it. There's a lot of different ways to do it. You can do it without a chair. But anyway, right. you can look it up and do it yourself online. It's kind of fun. It's probably a good party game. Um, look, up look up men versus women chair test. Right. That's probably the easiest one. And they've got some great videos on YouTube. And that's how we we, we saw it. And you can see people get frustrated with one guy. Because if you're a guy, you, you want to force it. And there was a guy that tried to force his head using his neck muscles, push himself off with his head. And he rolled and he hit like a cupboard handle and cut himself. And it wasn't very pretty. Yeah, but he so, laughed. So don't force it. Remember, safety first, kids. Anyway, so yeah, it's pretty fun. Bugs, it's probably a fun game to do when drinking. Yeah, yeah that's actually a great the chair test. Game. Yeah. So All right. check it out if you get a chance. Let me go into the live chat and I'm just going to go and read. By the way, the thumbnail for this video is in front of my bookshelf and it is my cat Rory being held by Mark Sargent. Right. Proof positive that I am here in the room and proof that the cats are not CGI. Exactly. At least that one isn't. Exactly. Uh, Flat Earth Crush is here and says, does that mean that men and women warp the fabric of space time around them differently? LOL. Hmm. Very true. Very no, it's true. A, oh, 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 I'm sorry. There's a little, little bit of nugget. You can, you can also test this if you put weights. If your guy, your guy, you can, you can cheat this test. You can put weights on your belt, whatever weight you want. I don't know. You want to hang a tool belt or whatever it is around your waist. That will also alter your center of gravity, and you can pull it off. When people say center of gravity and all that sort of thing, people are thinking, wait a minute, what does that mean? You believe in gravity, the way science tells no, us? No, no. I mean, it's like. You know, this is on my this is on my finger, right? You move this a certain way, eventually it's going to tip over. That's what we're talking about here is the tipping point. The center of gravity for a person is sort of like that. And men, apparently men and women, it's just slightly different. Okay, what about a woman who has a very large chest? You'd think that would have a bearing. I do not know the details on that. I've not heard that there's a correlation. I've read some of the through videos. The there were bigger women. Some of the videos had smaller women. So I don't think that it makes much of a difference. Hmm. You know what? Anyway. Try it yourself. Remember me. I try to practice what I preach. Do your own research. Ask questions. Sound like Jaren. <laughs> get some alcohol. <laughs> drink it, and then start doing these tests against walls. Exactly. With total strangers. Yeah. Yes. Um, <laughs> do not. Do, then nine months later, babies will be make, born. It'll make, be weird. <laughs> really? You're gonna go into that? Hello to Ace McLeod and uh, Dan Lowe, Alex Aquarius. Hello, Alex. Uh, him. 
Awari77 and Shay Smith is here. Hello, Mr. Maddie Moses, who says, indeed, center of balance. Uh, third Eye First says he can see the bubbles in space. Hello, Lee Redpath, Peanuts Clark, and Uber Flat Earth and Flat Earth Accord. And Frank Bocchiccio, hello, the Earth is flat. Frank, love your comments, I see everywhere. And I don't know if I mentioned Shay Smith, if I did not, hey. Uh, Indiana, and uh, Indiana, two separate words, asked me if I can get Russian vids back on. You know, I wish I could. I can't get a hold of Russian vids. I've tried. Where have Russian vids? He just sort of disappeared. His channel kept getting strikes because he uses copyrighted material like songs and like movies and commercials to, to prove his points. And he could, would get struck all the time. And then he just disappeared. So I'd like to address that. That's at least the song part. I have never, and you guys know me, I mean, I have used hundreds of songs, copyrighted songs at this point. You almost never get hit for music. Now, videos, that's one thing. In fact, using the image of somebody, that will get you smacked right and left. But music, you can you can almost guarantee that you can use it, but you're not going to get money for it. So you're not going to get those nickels. All right. So would Russian vids have been slapped for using music? music? No, not for music. For videos, for yes. Videos. V video content. Like when I got hit by the uh, trailer park boys, they now I, I claim fair use and I won, mm -hmm. but they they hit me for that. And that was a legitimate right, right. strike that I said fair use. Okay. So sometimes he uses things like professional wrestling clips. Yeah, or, that'll do it. Uh, movies. Based on the parent company. Commercials. Sure. All right. Now, parent companies also block it they will use, you know, they'll say blocked in certain countries or blocked worldwide, like Katy Perry. Mm. Katy Perry pr Productions, when everyone used that six second clip of Katy Perry talking about Flat Earth, yeah, that, that was blocked worldwide. In fact, I appealed and they, they didn't do anything. And, they, and there's no, there's no um, uh, moratorium on that or uh, no statute of limitations. So they can, they can smack you for a strike way after the fact, like, um, or block it a long time after, like Daniel Tosh seven months after i put out that video where he was talking about flat earth he comes back oh no we're blocking it i had a half a million hits on that thing i know right that's the breaks now i do have uh michael wake the sheeple in the live chat who says that uh, russian vids is indeed actually professor doom one so do your own research on that and joe joseph comes in and says russian vids is not gone he's got another channel so uh he does have another channel but I don't think he's doing anything on that channel. He's mm -hmm. always had a couple channels, backup channel and that kind of thing. Um, hello, Timaeus and hi, Fruity You. I don't know if I mentioned Martin Leakey. Hello, Martin. And people are saying they miss Russian vids. Um, let's see. Russian vids is a call for an uprising, according to Ginger Sugarbush. So sometimes maybe people are playing what, like the whole lifetime actor thing, playing two roles. I've talked to Russian vids on Skype personally, you know, not like, you know, when it's one-to-one, -one, not on camera. And I just felt he was genuine and sincere. Did he have any enemies? Well, I think anybody who's telling truth has enemies. Yeah, you know what I mean, though. Was there any rivalries happening between yeah, him? Yeah, there were him? some people who were always trying to dox him and say where he lived and what his real name was mm -hmm. and posting that information over and over again. But doing that, I mean, so... I mean, okay, hmm. like let's say my name is Susie Jones. Okay, so you got me, I'm Susie Jones. And now here I am, call me Susie, call me Patricia, but here I am with another Flat Earth video. I mean, he could just go on forward. You didn't tell me. <laughs> no, seriously. No, my name is not Susie that? Jones. Most generic name I could think seriously, of. Seriously, look moment. up Susie Jones, Houston. <laughs> Anyone finds anything, you let me know. Oh my gosh, what if it's like a serial killer? <laughs> really, how could you do that to me? Don't ever trust anyone. <laughs> trust no one. You know, that is the thing uh, within the conspiracy world. People don't trust anybody. And I have been burned due to trusting people. But I'm a trusting person. And because of a past experience where I've been burned from trusting someone, it doesn't mean I'm going to change who I am and start doubting people upon first meeting. I know trust is earned, like respect. But I, I approach everybody with trust right away. Not trust like here's my car keys, here's my, you know, uh, uh, the code to get into my bank balance or whatever, but just believing they are who they say they are and accept them, accepting them that way until otherwise proven 
guilty. Would you trust anyone that has a pen like this? It's kind of pretty. <laughs> Good Lord. I mean, seriously, it's hard to look at directly. Yes. Shiny things are often that way. And whereas I, look, I don't believe anything I say. You know, don't, yes, do, I know. You say do your own research. Do your own research, ask questions, and, but here's what I kind of would hope that people would do. And, and a lot have. I've gotten the emails. It's like, look, if you look, if you did your own research and you liked it and you realized I wasn't entirely full of crap, send me an email. Say, you know what? Kind of digging it. The thing about the material you present, a lot of it is the way you view Earth and Earth's shape. Um, it's from your perspective, right. your model, as you'd say. Right. I don't present a model. Therefore, nothing I'm saying is... So you're off the hook? No, I don't mean it that way. It's not even on purpose. I'm just not here to present a model. That's just not what I got into this That's for. That's true. I have got into this for with the human element and the communication element and that kind of thing that I'm personally interested in. Although I am interested in earth shape and finding out the truth and um, stopping the liars in whatever way we're able to do it, I'm not here to present a model or to even stand behind the model because I have no idea. And I don't even know how anybody can say definitively, my model is the model and this is how it works. I understand the model we've all been given is not the right model, but that's as far as I'm going to go. A lot of other models, very interesting. And you and I had some pretty good chats about simulation theory lately. Yes. And it's fascinating in the way sci-fi movies that have simulation theory as a part of them are fascinating. Exactly. Like The Matrix. Right. Which we watched last night. And of course, we've seen it before. We have. Not together, but we've seen it before. And it was fun to watch it together. I mean, was. Who, who gets to watch The Matrix with Mark Sargent? Me. That's true. <laughs> and the rest, of, and Mike and Gary and Rich and Caroline. Yeah, over there. Well, Caroline. Okay. Yeah. Um, but it was cool. It was cool because we talked a lot over the movie. We so did. We'd already seen it before. We wouldn't have done that in the theater. Right. I might have. But, you know. You know what the next one we should probably watch is? What? Blade Runner. Oh, I hang love on, Blade hang Runner. On, one, of your, one of your rivets is showing. <laughs> That's that is, fine. So I'm AI. <laughs> and I, what else am I? I'm a clone. Clone. And a witch. Yep. And a lot of other stuff. A lot of other things. We don't have to pile it on. No, we don't. You know, like three or four is probably enough. Uh, exactly. Why does somebody say something that I'm like a nice person? <laughs> you are a nice out. person. So if that be the rumor everyone <laughs> I starts spreading. <laughs> and I wouldn't say that just because I'm standing so close. Exactly. Don't, don't and I've got this knife on <laughs> at your vital organs. Um, <laughs> don't hurt me. Uh, Frank Bocciccio is correct, saying that flat earth is a spiritual awakening. Now, what spiritual means to you might be something different than what it means to me. Right. A spiritual awakening, I see that we're all connected. That's my spiritual awakening. Other people, 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 other people. <laughs> Other people have Would found... that be the FIHOP version of people? <laughs> yes, we're people. Um, no, other people have found Jesus. Other people have found that there's a creator. Um, I'm kind of in that bag too. I used to just think this place just popped into existence. And really, we were all an accident. But I definitely know it's been created now. And why does Flat Earth make you think it's been created as opposed to a globe? Answer that question, Mark. It's because the structure is completely different. The yeah, structure. But what's the, the difference? Flat the, structure, round structure. Well, Why because does one say God? Part of it. Part and of one it, doesn't. Part of it's conditioning because if you believe mainstream science, they have told us since you were six years old that the process of making things into a globe is very organic. A flat disc sitting somewhere is way less organic feeling, and if it's way less organic, that means it was built or created. So a Lending. globe earth involves things being set into motion and starting to spin and then form a core right. and then form the rest of the layers. Right. Where a flat earth, we don't have anything that we can say. Oh yeah. 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 Let's take it. Except even... for like a pan and pancake batter. That's it. Pancake batter. <laughs> that's awesome. Pancake batter earth. That's my model. Also don't forget that a globe doesn't exist on its own. That's the, that's the other part. It's like the, the globe is just a part of a much, much bigger system. Not only do you need a sun to deal with the globe, you've also got moons, you've got the solar system and a, ga or a galaxy around that and, and a universe around that. Whereas a flat system, potentially, if it's enclosed, it doesn't have to be, but if it's enclosed, that's it. It's the whole thing. Cut and dry. Super small, contained, efficient, perfect. 
I'm just saying. I want to say hello to Jeremiah Stirk, who says, we're all connected until we are not connected. Hmm. Interesting. Oh, that all, you know what? I, let me let me chime in on that real quick while you're looking at this, which is a lot of people will say, in fact, one out of 10 emails I get are people that say, why does it matter? Right? Why does it matter if the world is, is flat or not? You know, it doesn't change the fact that I have to still go to my crappy job in the morning and my wife hates me and my kids don't listen to me, blah, blah, blah. The dog pees on the carpet here's the difference. The difference is, yeah, it doesn't matter as long as it's a theory. As long as it's just an idea, oh yeah, you can go to your job all day long. The second it becomes reality, the second it clicks in and the majority of people out there going, holy smokes, where the heck are we? That's Then everything changes. You can say what you want about, I still have to go to my job. Yeah, but that's all anyone's going to be talking about. So it doesn't matter as, as we're talking about right now. But once it becomes real, sort of like the adopted thing we were talking about earlier, mm. it's like, it's like, you know what? I think you may be adopted. And you're like, yeah, yeah, whatever. It doesn't matter to me. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh yeah, by the way, here's a document that says you're adopted. Then it changes everything. Always, it becomes real. And as long as it's ethereal, you're like, yeah, yeah, take it or leave it. Or, you know. It's like those flat, it, flat earth videos many of us saw and ignored. They right. were just something there until it became real. Right. Once you or, look at the document. Yeah. Or when you're looking at the first, that first battery of flat earth videos, you, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't sink in, right? You go through a few of them and all of a sudden it hits, you know, holy smokes, all these videos might be actually real. And then <laughs> no. it, the scope of it. And it, what does it mean? Where am I? Uh, Who am I? I'm not sleeping. I got to call <laughs> Mark Sargent, leaving weird messages on his phone. Well, Julia Thomas says the truth here when she uh, writes Flat Earth gives you the thrilling feeling of exploration of the unknown. So people feel that they've lost space travel, but we have inner travel happening, finding out who we are inside. Right. We don't need any sorts of rockets for that. The line from the Matrix last night, mm. the sign above the door, know thyself. Mm. That's the, the biggest thing of all. Mm. Yeah, know the world around you, but through that you can know yourself you know what? what somebody named dan here in our live chat has asked what does daniel clark the cameraman for the documentary film think about flat earth and i don't know if i'm allowed to even ask him i think he's actually supposed to remain neutral until the project reaches its conclusion well, i would imagine it's got to be at the very least interesting oh yeah no no question to him it, it, here's here's my take on it we're going to speak for him. We're going to speak for him. He's right here. <laughs> back there. Well, no, no. I can speak for anybody that's been going into this. Oh, really? Time. Oh, sure. Because, again, not speaking for me. <laughs> love it or hate it, you have to deal with it. You have to resolve it in your mind. Nobody is going to be ambiguous about it. Yeah, you may be on the fence, but you're going to lean one way or the other. And, you know, the longer you stay exposed to it, the higher degree, you know this, the higher degree you're going to get sucked in. More and more people. How many people have you seen out there? It's like, they make the same, in fact, debunkers, one after another, after another. It's like, uh, first video, I hate flat earth. Flat earth sucks. Flat earth is terrible. And by the time they get the fourth or fifth, they're like, you know what? Flat earth's not so bad. I'm not going to apologize to the other three. I may not even delete the others, but they're now into it. Mm -hmm. So that's where I think Daniel's going to be. By the time this thing's over, he is going to be wearing the, wearing the t-shirts right along with us. Mm. Flynn the cat has just jumped up next to where Mark is. Hey, Flynn. Flynn's a good cat. Good cat. Oh, let's see what's been going on. Hello to Infinite Plane Society, who says, hashtag flat earth, hashtag globe exits. I got you there, 100%. Um, let's see. CC, hi. Thanks for being here, Road FM and Irk Child. And um, Laura Lawson asks, have you ever been out somewhere and someone recognized you by your voice, Marco Patricia? For me, the answer is absolutely not. By my voice, uh, by my you face. Nice voice. No, but nobody's ever recognized me as like, oh, you're that person on YouTube. But I have had people take pictures of my license plate when they're behind me or when I'm parked and they're in front of me on my car, which says flat earth. But no one's ever recognized me. Like, I mean, I'm on a YouTube channel. That's not really common. You get recognized. Me, on the other hand, yes. It's, really? Oh, my God. It's all the time. You know, autographs. No autographs. No flash pictures. Phones. Oh, oh it's, it's amazing. I can't, really can't go anywhere. You anymore. actually can't even go out the front door of my house. I can't. Well, there's people out there. Well, I mean, Daniel, we had to let him in. He paid thousands of dollars just to get <laughs> in the house for this. No, has anybody ever said, 
are you Mark Sargent? Oh, you do have the interesting airport story. I do. And that's, I'm hoping for that tomorrow morning when I'm flying out because I'm going to be wearing for the airport, I am Mark Sargent, to see if it happens to me again. Mm. Because I was down in Atlanta visiting Zen Garcia for the Flat Earth versus Globe Earth debate against Dr. Stephen Pigeon. And during that, everything was great. And when I went to the airport, <laughs> weirdness, because I'm putting my bag through. And you know, when you're going through airport security, unless you get that clearance thing where you have to pay to get your background mm -hmm. check, I'm not doing that. I just pay that. So I put the bag through and it go, of course, it's going to go through secondary screening. And as I'm sitting there with my I am Mark Sergeant t-shirt, this kid comes up, he's got to be like 25 years old. And he sees me, he's looking at the shirt, sees me, looking at the shirt. And he goes, you Mark Sergeant for real? I go, yeah, why? And he winks at me and he says, that's my name too, man. He hands me the bag without even checking it. What did that tell me? That told me that was Fight Club right there. You know, it was the bartender with the black eye giving you the free drink. It, maybe, but maybe the guy doesn't know anything at all about Flat Earth and just his name was Mark Sargent. Well, if it was, he was a pretty weird guy, if that was the case. Really going to give me my bag just because my name is Mark Sargent? No, he knew full well. I have a Facebook friend who I've never met whose name is actually Patricia Steer. We friended each other on Facebook because we have the same name and we never really speak. Nine out of ten people, <laughs> mark my words on this, nine out of ten people in this community I should probably stop banging on that thing. He's <laughs> banging on the base of the microphone. Wham, wham, wham. No, you, can, can you guys hear this when I'm you, tapping on you, the microphone? Are you becoming Alex Jones here? Didn't Rush Limbaugh do something? Some Rush? kind of tapping or banging or something when he did his show? Oh, uh, some, but, but Alex was way worse. Because Alex would scream. <laughs> I mean, Rush Limbaugh or uh, Jim Morrison. That's IPS's conspiracy. He believes it were all the same. My, my <laughs> second story, which just happened to me recently at the second Seattle meetup with... D Marble. D Marble. There was a lovely girl there named Melissa who I was talking to for about 10 minutes. And D Marble says, Hey, Mark Sarge, you like to come up to the stage, say a few words. I'm going, Yeah, sure. Why? Not? No autographs. Everybody, vultures, get out of here. And I go up to the stage. You know, some people actually might think you're serious. What I'm not serious? <laughs> no. So, so no, no, this is good. This is good. So I go up to the, I go up the stage and I say a few words, basically me just going few words. Thank you, everybody. Good night. And I give him the microphone. I go back, go back to where she was, and she's just staring at me. And I go, what? She goes, you're Mark Sargent. I go, yeah. She goes, I didn't know. I was like, oh, <laughs> seriously? And she was, yeah. And she had that whole that, that whole thing. Must be a very pleasing feeling because you've affected her life. She listened to the clues or any of those compilations other people have found that are the clues, like uh, they're hiding God or whatever. And they, she affected you. Affected her. I did, but at the same time, kind of like a disease or something. <laughs> oh my ribs! Seriously, you should stop. So what happened was. Uh, because of you, I should thank you for this, is that some people, uh, because, you know, me, it's like, remember, I get those cease and desist letters from Disney saying that. Oh, you're I don't think it's Disney. I think it's Pixar. But continue with your Thank story. you. Fine. It's Pixar that's writing me saying, stop imitating <laughs> Shrek on camera or, it, you know, blah, 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 actionable, blah, 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 you know, throw you in a hole and throw away the hole. So <laughs> what happened was, I forgot my train of thought. So, uh, oh, oh, okay, me. okay, because we do this video, right? Because we do this video. Yes, yeah, some people know me, but only because of this. Because this is the only time I let really. You've been on a few interviews where yeah, you're showing your face. Yeah, most of the time I don't though, and you, it's like because you're doing radio stuff. We're doing, yeah, I do a radio thing, and and most of my stuff is audio only. I don't like being on camera because I'm not. Again, who else owns a pen like this? So. Because of that, people don't. People only know me by my voice, and some people only know me by my name. Like, there's people that, that have listened to the Flat Earth Clues for the better part of two years now, and don't even know who made it, because they think it was uh, Dr. James or uh, that other guy. The, the two, you know, those two videos that one did under the dome full documentary, and the other one was um, they're hiding God with the greatest lie ever. You know, millions of hits on those things. They thought those guys produced it, right? So they didn't even know it was my name, and so but. The point was, is that lots of people, yeah, she didn't know because she only knew my name right. and the clues. So in a way, being on with me doing the secret show has made your face more recognizable. 
Yes. Although your work was way well known before that. Episode. Well, yes, it's still like a root canal for me, but it, it's fine. <laughs> and being on with you on Strange World mm -hmm. was sort of a way that people got to know me a long time ago. So we've been having a lovely symbiotic relationship. <laughs> we have. Yes. No, really, in a way. No, right? it is. Yeah. There, there is symbiotic. Absolutely. Yeah, like, uh, what is it? Like, um, like a whale that has those smaller fish on it that like eats all the algae in the gills. Boy, I better be the whale in this story. <laughs> you decide. <laughs> oh my God, no! Because if I, yeah, then I was, then I said, "What? Well, wait, you're the whale? Then what? You're calling me fat? <laughs> no, well, I'm not calling you fat. Not me. Um, let's see. We've got Paula, bad Christian, in the chat. And uh, let's see, Road FM is talking about uh, uh, IPS and IPS is here. And then there was a fake IPS in the chat, which is funny. You know, you've made it when there's people cloning your account. Uh, Ginger Shirtbush is saying, it's not Pixar, I was wrong. It's not Disney, it's DreamWorks. DreamWorks on Shrek? Isn't DreamWorks the one that opens with the boy like fishing? Yeah, fishing from the crescent yes, moon. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you. And so now I will look for the DreamWorks letters. Uh, hello, Nora. No one's flowers. It's weird that no Disney one's flower. Right. Oh, yeah, that is weird. Maybe for something completely different. How, hello to uh, Kitty Felines. I just love that uh, that YouTube name, Kitty Felines. Um, what else? What else? Uh, Flat Earth Accord says to you, Mark, that he misses your pretend glasses. <laughs> You didn't bring them with you. I didn't wear, bring my pretend glasses. And by the way, I, sh I should admit to you. I can bring you some of my real glasses, but you'd totally not be able to see. Dude, I'm having a hard time actually right now. Really? Okay. So you really actually probably do need glasses. Well, I get an injury over here in this eye. It's called age. No, no, no. That happens it's, to it's all something. of us. I'll you explain can't it off air. Hey, it was a... Fireworks? You know, no, the shooting range. Jilted you know. lover? It's like qualifying. You got to qualify. It's like, you know, blowback. <gasps> Nasty incident with the dart gun. Am I close? A dart gun? That's that's what... frying food and a splatter came and okay. hit you in did, the pupil. Did I tell you by the way? Because I haven't shown you, and who knows when you're going to be up to the northwest next. When do you know what those glasses are from? No, but did they have a fake nose attached at any one point in time? Might as well have been. I actually was when I went to a 3D movie up in Canada. Yes. And then I just took off the glasses and I popped out the 3D lenses. But I think that shape of glasses, when you actually do go get an eye exam and they do fit you for prescriptions for reading purposes. Oops, oh my God. Rory, oh my God. Show the show. <laughs> Rory just walked Holy across the laptop, smoke. almost hey, turned to show up. You two. What? No, they won't fight. You, you they, both they, cannot fit No, they on do. There. They, they fit up there. They're, they're on my printer. I mean, side of the desk gosh i love them cj cat people who love their animals this is what production assistants people. are for why can't you guys get your cats off? <laughs> right there's a wall so um yeah there. when you do get your um glass prescription there's when you get wall. a wall look i'm reaching right over there when you get a prescription fill that's a good style of glasses see, for see you. those see those lights right there yeah that's the reflection of this right here yep well yeah but that's gary's running that Whatever. What else we got? <laughs> Nothing. I'm just saying, get that, get, get that. Anyway, uh, let's talk about our visit to the Houston um, Space Museum. We went the other day. Uh, it is on my channel. And Daniel came and filmed it for the documentary. People have asked what the documentary is about. It's not specifically about me or Mark. It's about flat earthers. And it's about me <laughs> it's going to be very interesting i can't wait to see how it all comes together they don't have a title yet for it they it's a working title mark's flat earth journey right yep nope um it's for all of us so and what's going to become of it we don't know mark saves the flat earth world <laughs> okay just like uh bill nye Bill Nye. But yeah, I know. But actually, Bill, I shouldn't say that because Bill Nye would actually try to sue. Remember, he, he's been suing Disney for $9 million mm. for back pay. Mm. Whatever. It's never going to happen. Uh, so people you, ask You talk. I've got to go move something over there before there's a cat incident. Continue. Mm. Right. Got it. Sorry. Hello. Welcome, Sorry, to, welcome to the Mark Sargent Show. I'm your host, Mark Sargent. So Make sure to subscribe to Patricia Steers' channel. <laughs> people... <laughs> Avoid that Mark Sargent channel. People are asking me, why am I here? Yeah, a lot of people have asked me why you're here. <laughs> really? Were they asking what, that in the, in the chat? I'm just joking. 
Oh no, seriously. No, no, Daniel asked actually. So why are you here? It's like, well, okay, one in her house or on earth. One, I'm on, on under contract, and two, it's one of those interagency, you know, Stop. team building things. No more agency team. What? Because newcomers to Flat Earth might think it's real and might think that they, that they just might get confused. But joking is good for insiders. Right. Joking is good for insiders. And this is kind of an insider show. Patricia. Okay, so, so let's all right. So, I, the reason why is because Patricia and I went to the Museum of Flight up in Seattle, Washington at the Boeing testing facility, which is just south of Seattle. And that went amazingly well. That was just a, like a last minute idea. It's like, let's go to the Museum of Flight. We go down there and it was a fantastic mix of reality and fantasy, which was Boeing airplanes and other manufacturers airplanes and space agency craft in the same, you know, right next to each other. Wow, space craft, which craft? Mm. No, I'm serious. It's like a magic spell. Warcraft. Not Warcraft. Well, Warcraft. Yeah, okay. It's a thing. It's a thing. No, but I'm saying it's like a magic spell. Yeah. Like playing and pretending and casting a spell on all of us. It's true. It's true. Anyway, but we had a great time there. It, it, we, we, we had a great time the way you have a great time when you're with a close friend and you go to a horrible restaurant and you can laugh about the horrible restaurant with each other and then later joke about the horrible restaurant experience with each other. But really... The actual experience was really sad and depressing. NASA's not even trying with that museum. So you're saying I'm not a fun date. Awesome. This is great. So self-esteem here, now here. <laughs> with you? With <laughs> No, with, with you, with, self-esteem without you <laughs> down. Anyway. Right. Yeah. No, no, it's the opposite. My self-esteem is actually here. But when I'm with you, down there. Yeah, I do. No, I actually, yeah. yeah. It doesn't matter. So any, <laughs> anyway, we decided, it was like, hey, you should come down to Houston because that's where the main NASA thing is. You know, there's lots of NASA exhibits. We can actually go to the Space Center in Houston. It's near the Johnson Space Center as well. Right. Right, right next door. So that's what we did. And it happened to be that Daniel, filmmaker, director... He, all around nice guy. All around nice guy. We're required to say that. No, he's just really nice. Well, no, it's, and we're required that he decided to come by, and we all went down there, mm. which was really great because he got he brought his camera in, and it was a joke. It was awful. It was a long drive uh, from where I live. Well, that's because you were Houston. driving. <laughs> no, it was a long drive. He was driving. No, it was a long drive due to the fact that there are. There are uh, um, there's traffic situations based on hurricane and slowdowns. Not that there's active hurricane Hurricane Harvey anymore, but I do think some lights are still out, and maybe that in some small way is why there weren't very many people at this museum. But you can't write it all off to that. No, it was the most disappointing thing I've ever seen. But at the same time, there was one good thing about it, aside from the fact that we got to leave it. So there was two good things about it. Well, it was encouraging because if you want to know the okay, state, three good things about it. Why? Wow, what was the other thing? For you? We got to leave it. It was encouraging because the state of NASA is in a shambles, at least when it comes to the museum. Right. And the Saturn V rocket was pretty big. Oh, but Saturn V rocket was great, and uh, hopefully you guys. Well, you saw it a little bit on your live stream. But it wasn't worth can... thirty dollars a person just to see the Saturn V. Well, no, th actually, believe it or not, the Saturn V was free. It's this part was was the thirty bucks for the Saturn V over here. That was absolutely free. You didn't even have to, which is why when he told you to put down your selfie stick, he didn't have a legal right to do that because there was nothing on the doors. The set, all that selfie stick was in here. But when you pick up the tram, you're in here. And this employee, it's like just off of a knee jerk reaction. He's like, "Oh, selfie stick is bad." Even though the Saturn V, you could have used it. The whole place was just uh, as if it's uh, the land that time forgot. It was like an aging amusement park from, take your pick, East Coast. Yeah. Everyone knows, you know, when you, when you can't afford to go to Disneyland, you have to go to one of those second, you know, those mm -hmm. cut rate amusement parks where everything's super worn down and then not, you realize they're just going to wait till whatever it is just snaps in half. Honey, and, can we play on the swings? Well, honey, mm -hmm. there aren't any swings. Exactly. You, know, the, you can sit on the dirt and pretend you're in swings. The, it was... <laughs> And, and honestly, everything there was extremely dated. It was extremely dated. It was endorsed. And they were using cheap endorsements. 
but like for example the two big things here i'll show you the little brochure here so like in the front you see the map and guide of the houston space center right there the two things they're actually promoting look what's on the front of there robonaut you know the 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 the, the, the robot astronaut which is just ridiculous because he was just a torso and it he was didn't... a torso about like about as big as your torso right in a glass case and then the back part of this head was like white napkins folded and sort of right. taped together it was basically the the astronauts of the future it didn't move or good. talk no it just looked like that it's like the robot the, the astronauts of the future are going to be robots literally that's what they have on the on the front of this thing that's one of the most interesting things in the whole place the other thing is just huge which is oh my god i just thought about it what? how they're going to fake further travel if they decide they're going to try to pull it off like mars that's why they don't need people what, robot astronauts they're going to say that there's robot astronauts that's why it's so prominently placed for no reason since it was just in a small little corner area maybe maybe weren't there people who paid to go around the moon, like a slingshot around the moon, right. unnamed civilians. Two million dollars a piece. Supposedly. And they said that those people would be on an unmanned uh, flight. Yeah, they're there thinking of doing it remotely. And yeah. guess who's going to be flying it? Robonaut. <laughs> the guy with the napkins taped to the back of his. Not head. to be confused with Robocop. All rights reserved. Right. The other thing, the other part of this is the uh, 747 jumbo jet with the space shuttle on the back of it. And I'll show you real quick here. We'll just open oh, it's up depressing too. the brochure. Yeah, it's depressing, not because necessarily it's old. I'm not, I'm not trying to block out Patricia here for a second. You guys can see a sort of a map of the layout. That's all this is, right? The plane is actually bigger than a large chunk of this little museum. And I wouldn't even call it a museum. There's some exhibits here and there. But it is not a museum in any stretch. So you've got a, a 747 jumbo jet with a space shuttle parked on top. And I'm old enough to remember when this thing was used, when they flew that thing out there, which is they they put a shuttle on top of this back of the 747 to do two things. One, to transport it from one place of the country to the other. And two, you can test the glide capabilities of it by you know releasing the clamps and letting the shuttle glide down with or without its jet power. Depends on how they did it. But... This thing was done in the mid 1970s, 1977, if I'm not mistaken. And I knew this because I actually bought a physical die cast model of this thing from the Smithsonian in Washington, DC back in 1977. So this thing is aged. I mean, it's got wear marks all over it. I mean, it was in diet, you know, designed for industrial use. You can go in the 747 and walk around. Hey, you can go up to the space shuttle level and walk around. You can't do anything in the cockpit because people would just flip buttons, that'd be bad. But that is like, the, these are the two highlights. That's what they picked. One doesn't exist, and the other is from 1977. There are no new programs. I'm hoping Robonaut knows how to swim, because any <laughs> simulation of, of manned spaceflight or roboted spaceflight is going to be in a pool. Right. So Robonaut right. needs to be able to swim. Endorsements. Oh, my God. The endorsements, I mean, NASA trying to make money off this thing. One, okay, I understand the Omega endorsements. Wait, I'm going to turn the air conditioner on and get something to drink. You keep talking. All right. Welcome back to the Mark Sargent Show. <laughs> okay, so here's what here's what happened with the endorsements. They have a giant Omega watch, which is yeah, they say, oh, astronauts wear Omega watches. This is an Omega watch, but they, so there's a big Omega watch on the side, and then they have a, like an astronaut suit, and then the, the astronaut suit, the guy's wearing an Omega watch, and it's like half coming off. It's like just open the thing up and fix it. The other endorsement, which I thought was hilarious, was Angry Birds. They actually took an endorsement from Angry Birds, and they are in there. They have a little thing for like a kid's section. It's like, why does Angry Birds have anything to do with NASA? I know Angry Birds, the people at Angry Birds, they will literally sign any contract to do, you know, Star Wars, Indiana Jones, whatever. There's an Angry Birds thing for everything. But why are they in NASA? It is just ridiculous. What was the third thing? What was the third endorsement? I'm trying to think. Third endorsement was Star Trek. That's what it was, Star Trek. So they have actually have an NCC Star Trek shuttle there, and it's sealed off. You can't even go inside it. It's like a like a Star Trek Enterprise next gen shuttle, but it's absolutely it's just a box. It's sealed off. There's no interior thing. It's just a it's just a plastic box. But Paramount wouldn't even pay whatever whatever breakdown they had between the negotiations. 
the, who knows, but they didn't even pay for, to have a Paramount logo or even a Star Trek logo or even a plaque saying, oh yeah, it's Star Trek. You're, they're mixing reality with fantasy. And it's fascinating to watch because literally you have a Star Trek fantasy sitting there in the middle of all these other things, which they put off as, as reality. It's like, okay, so you're, you're making the link. Remember what I did in one of the, um, uh, the early uh, Flat Earth Glues, which was you're mixing some of, some of the, the, the space fantasies like Star Trek and Star Wars. You're mixing that with the real stuff. Actually, no different than the shuttle right here. In fact, I think there's a better picture of it on the inside. Yeah, this thing right here. There you go. You guys can see that, right? There it is, 747 with the space shuttle on top. Perfect reality and fantasy mix. In fact, you couldn't probably come up with a better example of that because lots of people have flown on 747s. It was the flagship of the airline world for decades and decades. And the space shuttle on top, yeah, it could be launched. I mean, the space shuttle is a real thing, but did it go into space? Not at all. So there you go, reality and fantasy, side by side. And that's the whole message of this. No different than the Museum of Flight. Museum of Flight, same sort of thing. You've got airplanes sitting right next to space vehicles. I'm back. It's amazing. Patricia is back. I turned the air on and I got some pomegranate juice. We now resume our normal programming. Um, you know how we've been doing the Illuminati game cards? and Right. Uh, yeah, like I wanted to pass some to you here. Oh. Yeah, can you pass those back to me? It really doesn't have the same effect. No, it doesn't. Yeah. I should, I'm going to look at these cards real quick. Though. Yeah. <laughs> Pomegranate juice. Are, are you, are you actually, oh, look at that. You just put that right in the first one. You should just keep the box. I want to keep the whole thing, can I? Yeah, you can. I, well, it's your box. You, you gave it to me for me, right? I thought you were only like letting me use it. No, no, it's absolutely. Yeah, it's yours. The, and look right here. Here we go. There we go. You guys want to see it again. Flat earthers. In fact, you know what? Flat Earthers. I didn't even realize it was it didn't say just Flat Earth. Mm -hmm. Or it's called the Flat Earth card, but yeah. People laugh, right. but the Flat Earthers know something. Oh, so it's probably the easiest title for the movie. Um, bling, bling, the BS of the ISS. Hello. How are you? How did you do in the hurricane? How is your horse? I'm talking to her like I would be talking to her on Facebook Messenger. <laughs> How is your horse? She has a horse. That's yeah. awesome. She's been a professional bodybuilder, like the kind of that you would see in magazines, like fully amazing and rides horses. And what are you saying? She's awesome woman. Bling, bling, the BS of the ISS. Subscribe now. She's in the live chat if you're watching this live. Um, hey, Twitwit. Someone's asking me if I'm on gin. I've actually never had gin unless it was mixed with other things. And I'm not a big you, drinker. You're not a big drinker. You okay. act like this pretty much sober. Oh, but that, I mean, I don't really drink much. I think my body is small enough that I get <laughs> I get affected by alcohol quicker than maybe most people. So I don't, or any substance. Yeah, I think I, anybody that weighs like 99 pounds. No, I don't weigh 99 pounds. But um, Five Arts Liberalis, hello. Morky Love, hello. Uh, Shay Smith, and let's see who else is here. Brian McCarthy, Joey Sylvie is here. Morky Love Joey. says, I met Joey Sylvie. So Joey has the most enthusiastic messages all the time. Yeah, I love that. Hey, Mark, what's going on? Eight exclamation points. <laughs> it's wonderful. It's, it's just great. I love what people up? who are excited about this. This is something to, you know, what is it? Be excited. Be, be, be excited. excited. About. Wait a minute, what's that from? No idea high school cheerleading which i was well no with. that's b aggressive b right, right. e aggressive b e a g g r e s s i v e how do you know were you a cheerleader just... <laughs> no well, they had male cheerleaders and it was usually somebody pretty big what? i'm not judging all god's children no my sister was male cheerleaders oftentimes got into it so they could just look up the skirts of cheerleaders right or were they really into cheerleading no they were they were in children and they were gay oh yeah I didn't know that. Yeah, it happens. My sister was Regina George. She was captain of the cheerleaders and the evil spawn that, uh, and she killed three of my brothers and sisters. I did not. She did. My, so I my mother stopped, sister. my mother stopped having kids. After giving birth to your sister. She did. Uh, this is true. And I don't the care because my sister, my sister's not going to watch this. So my sister, my mom wanted five kids. Mm -hmm. After my sister, she's going, that's no it. More. No more kids. So that's funny. Later, I'm going to charge my sister with murder. 
Oh, I have a brother and a sister, but I was first born. And then my sister two years younger and then my brother. And my parents did want a boy. So that's why they ended up having three three kids so they could finally get that boy they wanted. Right. So. Yeah, rivets. Rivets in the back of my head. I was first born too. Oh yeah. They have things they say about firstborns and what it means about their personality and yeah. middle child and Honestly, the baby of the family. If you're not firstborn, you're pretty much not worth a plug nickel. Firstborn and only child have a lot in common because the firstborn for a while is the only child. So that's a sort of a leadership role oftentimes. I've always wanted to be an only child. So I kind of project that into the family poor sister. and say that my sister was adopted. Funny, funny, funny. That's Daniel true. Reza says, I like when Mark says, I am Daniel Reza. Oh wait, maybe he hasn't said it. <laughs> Who's, oh, does he want me to say it? Yeah. Who's Dan? Wait, wait, which one? I am Daniel Reza. Instead of I, I am, am. Oh, instead of I am Mark Sargent. Yes. I, I am Daniel Reza. Wait, hang on. I am Daniel Reza. <laughs> there you go. Uh, this is kind of funny. Um, Brian McCarthy says the fact that the NASA museum has Star Trek models in it says it all. Damn straight it does. And honestly, they were too cheap to even get the licensing for it. So the, the models, models didn't there didn't even open up. Didn't even open up. It it's, just was like a box. Yeah, it's it'd be yeah. It was like a, a, it's a Star Trek shuttle it for next gen. It wouldn't even amuse a child. And in fact, they even made and you could tell this. It was like NCC one seven zero one. That's nerd talk, by the way. NCC seven one slash seven. Okay, first of all, there is no Star Trek thing I've ever seen in my life where they used a slash. So they wouldn't even pay for that. There's no Star Trek mentioned. There's no Paramount Pictures mentioned. They so who built them freaking model? It's like oh yeah, we'll just loan you this. Okay, they pretty much got it for free from the Paramount lot. Right. Yeah. I have a question to ask you. Me? And it's been asked of me via email. And the question is. Go ahead. <laughs> it's not one of those kind of questions. <laughs> what has it been like coming here and staying with me? Now, I know you know what I'm like in person because we've met before. What is it like in my house and how is it reflective of me or not reflective of me? Like, were there any surprises is what the email said for you. Tell all, Mark Sargent. Well, that's a very interesting question, Patricia. What's and it been like? I don't mean to make this about me. I'm saying, you know, when you meet somebody or when you talk to somebody and then you meet in person, it's <laughs> oftentimes very like, oh, they're different or they're this or they're that. It's a whole different ballgame when you go to their house and are around them frequently and seeing how they live, how they eat, how they cook, if they act any different. So are there any impressions that you've received from this that have changed your mind about me or given you more information hmm. or I don't know, anything? Well, will okay, one, will this affect your Yelp review, which I He's will be writing Yelp review on my get, house. <laughs> <laughs> get back, which yeah. is interesting because it's not a bed and breakfast, but I'm going to be writing it as it is. Uh, no. Okay. First off, the cameras that do not do it justice. It is a really interesting house. I, I mean, the house is a house, the house is a, you know, four bedroom, five, two swimming pools, you know, servants, that whole no. thing. But it is, you have deck, you have such a flair for decoration. <laughs> it is perfect. It's better. It, uh, very rarely in my life do I do I run into scenes and people that exceed my expectations. You have done that. Uh, like this little ruler here goes up to, you know, I'm thinking an eight, right? No, it's 12. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, it was really, really great. Did I learn anything new? Uh, that the cats are way more high maintenance than I ever, you know, you don't even do it justice when you say, oh yeah, these cats are all over the place. No. These cats are unavoidable. There's a cat literally right here, right here. They're two and a couple of months. So I think that they're still in that stage where they run around a lot and yeah. create havoc and whatever. No, it's, but they're pleasant to be around, right? Absolutely. And it is, it's been a, it's been a fantastic trip. And I've learned this about Mark Sargent. He makes really good popcorn. <laughs> he does. Okay. That and is he's a, a really nice guy, but I've already been where he lives and seen all that. So being a, um, uh, we're, you're actually, you're actually taller than I thought you'd be. But wait, we met in person before. Right. Everyone yes. knows because we've been so, in sorry. videos together. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, yes, we have. 
Silly me. Okay, so here's this popcorn recipe. Well, it isn't really your recipe. It's not a recipe, but it's been adopted from what I had. You have we use coconut oil because that's what I've got, and uh, organic okay. popcorn, and then seasoning it with just salt. And he's got a method with the kernels for, for my madness. Well, okay, Explain you guys know. It. Look, everybody out there, and then tie it into flat earth. I'm so we're to, not accused of not talking about I'm, flat earth. I'm going to try to bring this back, which is. If you guys are cooking microwave popcorn right now, Do just not. stop. Just throw your I don't care. Out this right isn't now. like Oprah when she said, "You know, we should eat beef anymore." You know, like and then the beef industry. I don't care if the if the popcorn industry, the microwave popcorn industry, comes down on me or not. Stop eating microwave popcorn. Cook it old school, and that is a pan, a little bit of oil. You heat up the the oil to about a third of whatever burner uh, temperature you got. Put in three kernels, three eight kernels. Put in three kernels, let them all pop. As soon as they pop, pull them out of there. You probably shouldn't eat them because they have too much oil. If you're into too much oil, fine, eat them. I don't care. Then you put in the popcorn and you put a lid on it. I, you put the wider the pan, the better, but you make sure you put a lid on it. Half a cup is great if you're really into eating this. The reason why I know this, by the way, is because I watch a lot of movies, both in the theater. Oh, I don't buy a lot of theater popcorn because it's just way overpriced. It's if theater popcorn too. was a buck a bag, I'd buy it. I'm just not, and it's not like I can't afford the four bucks a bag. It's just ridiculous. Don't charge me that much for something that when I grew up was a buck a bag. And it's not organic. And it's got that fake buttery grossness in it. Exactly. Flavored, chemical, colorized, GMO nightmare. Exactly. So anyway, so you cook that up and then just straight and you can use whatever oil you want honestly i've tested but just what do you think did you think that the coconut oil coconut oil is awesome it, uh, no uh un, smoking unflavored unrefined if you can find it mm -hmm. it was um, organic too i kind of me but personally i like using corn oil just because corn, it's corn 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 i mean you can use peanut oil olive oil is fine lots of people use different seasoning but i use just a little bit of a butter real butter you know you can use, i use a vegan butter vegan butter vegan butter is actually not bad and salt that's it and that's it, butter and salt. I mean, it's old school. Are you but gonna the, be the, making some tonight? When we watch absolutely, some I'm gonna, after this show, I'm gonna pop some up. The point is, is that get away from microwave popcorn. That story, you remember Just that story? Just get away happened. from everything microwave. You remember the story recently, right? The lawsuit that happened? Oh, you're gonna like, he's gonna love this. Which Did it is- involve a death with microwave popcorn? No. <laughs> Cause that would be interesting. No, a guy ate himself to death with microwave popcorn. Are you making that up? No, yes, I am making that up. Oh. So, okay, what he did was he, he had this ritual. Okay, microwave popcorn, super easy. Completely get it. Get away from that crap. What he did was he was... he. he this is a flat earth show in case you were wondering. It is a flat earth show. Okay, flat earth. There we go. <laughs> so I believe in flat earth. I don't have a belief. I just know. Patricia. Okay. No, it's Susie. Why does it say Susie on here? <laughs> oh, insert laughter. Okay, whatever. So here's what here's what happened. So this guy made microwave popcorn. He had a ritual. You guys probably saw this in the news. Some of you did. And he opened up the bag. That he figured out the perfect amount of time to put a bag of microwave popcorn. He pulled it out and he'd open up the bag and he was like, more than the taste of the popcorn, he loved the smell of it. And he'd just go, and he'd breathe in that stuff from the back. Guess what happened to him? Lung cancer. He got cancer. <laughs> and he sued the popcorn. He's really happy about it. He this. sued the popcorn. Well, because of course, that way, you know, we make this wonderful invention, well, microwave popcorn. The BHA plasticky lining, the chemicals that are sprayed on the inside of it. The point was, is that, of course, we always will find something along every... Every convenience we make has some sort of downside. And he found this wonderful, happy moment, that two or three seconds where he breathed in, he's going, ah, oh, isn't this the most wonderful popcorn? And he'd go down and eat it. And he eventually got cancer and he sued and he won. But I mean, how can they directly attribute the cancer to the popcorn? Apparently they did medical tests and they did. It was apparently hard. You, you, you can just microwave a bunch of popcorn and then analyze the gas as the bag is opened. And of course, why would anybody breathe in the gas? Well, why does anybody breathe in anything? Wow. I know. McDonald's coffee. Too hot. Sue. Win. Wow. I know. So there you go. So anyway, so there you go. Microwave popcorn. Get rid of it. Go to the kernels. And I know Orville Redenbacher may be GMO. And I'm not endorsing GMO. It is awfully tasty, though. Well, if you can't get other popcorn, there's other popcorn you can't, I've got is. If you can't find organic popcorn, just buy the kernels. Don't buy it. 
<laughs> get the kernels. That's the most important thing. Get the kernel popcorn. You can get them anywhere and nobody buys them. Okay, what about gas stove? I have a gas stove. Do you find that easier for popping corn than a regular electric mm, stove? Yeah, it's kind of hit or miss because okay. it all comes down to the, the dial. All right. You know, it, you, I generally, again, 30, 30%. 33%? Oops, I'm not supposed to joke. Why no, things. Patricia? No, you know, 30, 30, 40%, somewhere in there. And here's, here's the big thing. You want to cook the popcorn at, I know, people are probably saying, get off the popcorn. Stop talking about Stop popcorn. Stop talking about popcorn. <laughs> no, no, I got to get this in. Look, this is key. This is old school stuff that you guys should know. And that is when you want to cook the, the popcorn at the lowest temperature possible. This is the chef in me. Where, because the lower temperature means it's going to be fluffier. If it's too low, the popcorn kernels are just going to smolder. This part's the best part of what you're saying. All right. If the, if the oil temperature is too low, they're just going to smolder and turn black and die. You didn't have any unpopped kernel, the kind that you can Well, there were a few, but it's all right. I'm not, I'm not too worried it's because I'm working on your stove. So the, the lowest temperature you can, and then the kernels pop. If you pop them too fast, you just crank up the oil, the oil temperature. Here's the problem. You run into that. The faster the popcorn pops, the smaller the balls become. So it's not fluffy and tasty. It becomes like Cracker Jack popcorn, which is on its own. It's fun. You add some caramel, some salt. Mm -hmm. It's pretty tasty. But not everybody likes eating Cracker Jack popcorn. Mm -hmm. It's real dense, and, you know, they don't break apart into little pieces. You get, you know, and the prizes now are just a piece of paper in the Cracker Jack popcorn. Oh, the tattoos. Weren't those the best it ever? It used to be like it's some water hard toy, tattoos. like a whistle or something, too, back in the old, old, old days, my mom said. Something Cracker nice. Jack. I love Cracker Jack. And Cracker Jack's vegan, too, by the way. I'm not saying it's good for you. So there you go. Popcorn. Yeah. You got it. Replay this. You guys will be fine. Right. Popcorn. Now, back to Flat Earth. Enjoy back to the movies. Flat Earth Show in progress, sponsored by... Illuminati. <laughs> <laughs> Coming to a world near you. They sponsor everything. <laughs> they sponsor everything. <laughs> they do. <laughs> uh, so, uh, Clayton... Sponsored by New World Order. <laughs> That's smooth. <laughs> Illuminati flavor. <laughs> I'm not even. I honestly. Are you I, drunk? No, I'm not. I. I just, no, this is the first time I ever get a chance to do a show next to you. Oh yeah. We've done show after show after show. I've never. Well, got no, a we've done the live walking around shows. But it's not. The, it's not the same thing. I don't get to do this. And this. It's fun. It is. Uh, Ace McCloud said butter is the key to any good popcorn. Oh, butter. Butter is good. I mean, I mean, I, I use vegan butter, and it actually almost you can't. And you, and I know people do all sorts of different types of salts and then um, uh, like salt. cheese dust or, you know, the simulated cheese dust and also there's something called hot sauce. Nooch. Ooh, that would be wet though. Nooch, which is nutritional yeast. The nickname for it is Nooch. If you ever find any Nooch nutritional yeast in a whole type food store, organic store, it tastes like cheese. It's powder. You can sprinkle it on the popcorn and you will think you're eating cheese. You know, one of the favorite new discoveries, well, I shouldn't say new discovery. It was a friend of mine. We went to a movie theater. Space travel? <laughs> no. It was, she put milk duds in the movie popcorn. She That's took like a, a recipe for being overweight and unhealthy. Oh my gosh. So good though. You put it in because milk duds, well, the, the melting temperature of milk duds is higher than others. So it's not as sticky on your fingers. And plus, you'd be eating popcorn, eating popcorn, and then all of a sudden, this sweet chocolatey surprise. Buy the going, milk duds. Oh, and so popcorn, good. And you get the diabetes free. <laughs> I don't know if it causes diabetes. It just sounded funny. No, it, it, you know, yeah, it wasn't low calorie, <laughs> but it was, it, was it was pretty tasty. Add milk duds. Don't add um, those little chocolate chips. And you, you can't say, well, I don't have milk duds. All I have is chocolate chip cookie chips from thing. No, the melting point on those things are way too low. And oh my, it just turns in, I mean, your fingers turn into uh, disgusting. Uh, you know who else likes uh, hot sauce? Fukudina Walker on popcorn. Sure. Huh? I want to try it if Fukudina likes on, it. I mean, honestly, it. onion powder, garlic powder, Italian seasoning, uh, Cajun seasoning, just any seasoning you want. But start with the basics. The old school, butter and salt. There's a reason why it works. Chris Topher is saying he's hungry now. <laughs> I know. I'm really pushing this. I'm, well, after this, I'm cooking up some. Uh, Road FM is asking if my top is torn, and no, it is not. It is a kind of modified hoodie, and one side has no sleeve, and one side. I'm going to wear my hoodie now just because he <sighs> mentioned it and kind of look really dumb for a while. Oh, yeah. Should we do? <laughs> <laughs> South Saeed. Yeah, exactly. Right, yeah. Represent anyone, yeah, seriously, anyone that owns a pen like this should not be a big surprise that she owns a hoodie like that. Anyway. You don't own anything that is boring 
everything is interesting Thanks. everywhere. Everything's interesting on Flat Earth, right? We all agree. Well, Flat that. Earth, well, that's why you're into it, because Flat Earth is the most interesting topic interesting. that's out there. Michael Kirl Kilpatrick says, Shalom, everyone. And uh, Five Arts Liberalis says, Mark's looking more healthy since he started staying with Patricia. Ah. Well, because of veganism, well, because of the we lack of sleep and the cats. Three times, and you weren't vegan, but when you've been here, obviously everything you're doing was vegan. I made you lunch and it was vegan. Do you feel the need to eat a burger right now? Probably does. Uh, no, I don't. <laughs> but excuse me, can I borrow your car and go to McDonald's? <laughs> but Patricia, um, it, no, no. Look, it's been it's been great. No, mm -hmm. we we've always gotten along. Uh, we've got Ute Ute Hugh more Hugh healthy. As well. No, you know what it is? It's the freaking lighting in this room. Is it good? Well, I mean, Gary's got that spotlight right on my There's head. No um, it is, it's right on Gary. It's, it's not a spotlight. This is an actual You guys can see light. it. It's right there. I know, but it's not a spotlight. It is a household light. <sighs> Gary, Mike, Rich, Caroline. Oh, my God. <laughs> Funny. Hello and Daniel's not even here. Where is Daniel? He's sitting oh, okay. on the sofa. Is he listening? Uh-huh. He's um, not. He's like playing on his phone. Typing to typing to somebody going, oh my God, get me out of here. Let's see. He, you um, know who he's going to see tomorrow? Chris Pontius. Oh, the model maker, Chris Pontius. I already knew that. You didn't even need to whisper it in my ear. I, just, I didn't whisper it in your ear. Spaced out. Yes, I do know that he's going to Spaced meet out, really? Oh, yeah. You can't really say spaced out. Agent. Traitor. <laughs> Betrayal. Uh, yeah, he's going to go up and see Chris Pontius mm -hmm. up in Dallas. Mm -hmm. Dallas. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow. So that'd be fun. Yes, and I have a Chris Pontius model, a small one here that he made for me, which is really cool. Uh, let's see. Um, mm -hmm. Wake the Sheeple has a very good point. He says, don't ever let your children burn the microwave popcorn because the smell never leaves the microwave and it well, will never leave the house. Many offices smell like microwave many offices. popcorn forever. Yeah. I mean, it is, it is like a rite of passage, burning <laughs> microwave popcorn in an office and people complain about it. You know, Alex Aquarius says that Cracker Jack used to have a wooden stick inside it. Did it? How old is that guy? Alex Aquarius was at my Flat Earth meetup. Was he like 120? younger than me. Maybe there was a wooden stick inside There was it. wooden stick in Cracker Jacks? <laughs> Come on. I've been eating Cracker Jacks since the 70s. But maybe you were eating the wooden stick and you just thought it was the Cracker Jack. That did seem like a lot of fiber. <laughs> no, seriously. Nice toothpick. <laughs> So, Alex Crayus, if you're still here, a wooden stick, really. It's like crunchy. <laughs> mm. wooden, wait, wooden stick? Seriously, somebody give me some clarification on that. Look that up. Wooden stick and Cracker Jack. Wooden stick and Anyone Cracker Jack. Wait, why, wait, why? Well, they had toys in there. <laughs> what? Maybe, no, maybe no. for a very, very disadvantaged child, a wooden stick was a toy. That's the only thing I can think of. Maybe it was a bat. I just put in a marble. Yeah. A bat? Oh, you mean instead of a toy? Like a wooden stick was the prize? Tamea says Cracker Jack had a little plastic thing in it. Well, it did have pl plastic toys. I don't plastic, remember the like plastic toys. a little toys. train or a little plastic whistle. I only got the tattoos and paper things. And... <laughs> Brian McCarthy is saying the first thing you're going to do when you go back is order a steak. But you've eaten hamburger? No, no, it's Roast not. Roast beef sandwich. And what was the other meat thing you ate when we went out? Uh, the, oh, um, sausage pizza. Sausage pizza. So it's he's the, not um, being deprived. What, no. Just no, not here. Patricia doesn't, Patricia doesn't beat you over the head with veganism. She recommends veganism. Mm -hmm. I could cook vegan. I can do that. I've done, heck, I did vegetarian you did. for you a year. You made vegan food for me when I came and visited you in 20, uh, fall of 26, whenever that was. Fall 20, of 2016. 15? 15. 15. Fall of 2015? Right. No. Yes. It's impossible. Because the Flat Earth is not a conspiracy. This whispering will make people think we're plotting some lies. Oh, right. Sorry. Um, so on, on. one of those people is going to make a video out of this and say we're Option lying. Okay, three. wait. I found out about Flat Earth in March of 2015. Right. You came down at the end of 2015. Oh, the end of 2015. Okay, right. that's and why 2015. I'm thinking it yeah, was because it was it was before it was close to 2016. Right, it was 2015. Yeah, okay. I, I fixed you. I, I can cook vegetarian. It's anyway, not. Yeah. I'm sorry. I can cook vegan. 
everybody's done vegan from did. time to time. You and your mom did. Yeah, everybody's got some vegan stuff. Yeah, in their if cupboard. you eat a salad, you're vegan. But that, for that moment. But look, if there's an item on a restaurant, I, here's the sucker. The sucker that I'm for. If I'm in a restaurant and they say house specialty, meat lovers delight, I'm probably gonna go for it because I'm like, because I'm always curious. Are you a meat lover? Well, no, no, but I appreciate um, uh, proprietary meat. cooking. <laughs> no. <laughs> Oh, yeah, okay. Dead animal flesh. No, the what I'm saying at is at least we're a balance. No one could say this show is pushing the vegan agenda. No, it's like a 50-50. It okay. Let me clarify. It Although I'm right and he's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, see, there's no tear. So if I if Patricia asked me to be vegan, if she actually asked me to be, I would I would totally do it. I would never ask anybody though. Well, I know, I know. I would I would think my presence might make someone think about it or my words. And that's all I would ever think. And I do get people writing me saying thanks to you and a few things you've said on the show or on your Facebook or on your Twitter. I've looked into the vegan life and now I'm vegan. Thank you. And I'm thinking, wow, I didn't have to hit anybody over the head, send them some horrible pictures, make them watch horrible videos. I just said, hey, animals deserve to be treated as well as we do. And they thought, yeah. And others think, nah. And I still am friends with those people. It's all good. If, you know, we'll talk about that off camera. So here's the thing. If I go to a restaurant and there's an item on this restaurant menu that says uh, uh, something that they really, really specialize in, that's, I'm curious. It's like, okay, you're proud enough to say, this is, this is what we, you know, we sell a million of these every year. I'm going to try it. I want to, I want to know. I don't care what it is. If it was vegan, I'd do it. If it was vegetarian, I'd do it. If it was a dessert, I'd probably do it, mm. even though I, I'm not a huge dessert guy. You never mind, but dessert sounds kind of good actually right now. Mm. Anyway, popcorn, meat, dessert. What are we talking about? Flat Earth and flat Earth. Now, did we beat? <laughs> did we crush any NASA employees there? No, the empl the employees there w had the life pretty much sucked out of them. Long the before employees we got there. literally look like they were exhausted by life. They looked like they, they should looked be like rags that had been wrung out and flung in a corner. They mm. just had no. There were people. Spark left they, they looked like they should be working at a carnival. In the uh, science, Houston, I mean, excuse they me, the NASA Science Museum was speaking of. Yeah. Yeah, it was sad. Not that they're bad people. They they were nice to us. But good for us because if that's the resistance on the other side, here the thing here. Okay, here's the the key part. You want me to tell you the the quick synopsis of what I took away from it. Here's why we're going to win. They had nothing new there. Everything was old. Mm. Nothing was what about in the Mars poster. In the uh, um, oh yeah yeah I got to mention that real quick you guys didn't already appreciate it from the, uh, the from our live show from live stream yesterday. we get to the hangar the unmarked hangar basically with Literally, nothing on the door with a, a metal door with nothing written on it nothing no window on the not door. even a number on the door it looked like a door to like a shed where there'd be some rakes yeah in fact you were you were convinced it was going to be locked or it wasn't going to go anywhere yeah and the lock on the door was just the kind of lock you could like probably open with a credit card right. Yeah, it was it was that easy. And you go inside, and there's a Saturn V rocket. There's in there. a Saturn, a full size Saturn V rocket laying on its side, hundreds of yards long, and no and one in there. There's literally no one in there but us. And it's like the Saturn V rocket in my shed. <laughs> and they list all the Apollo missions where they use this rocket: Apollo one, Apollo seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, all the way to seventeen. And at the very end, they have this banner this 30 foot by 15 foot banner yeah those plastic ones that you like tie up now opening or it might as well be september 27 exactly <laughs> it might as well be an apartment complex coming in the future near you right you know open yeah exactly opening now apart you know nasa apartments and they were taught what replace that with mars program it's like oh yeah we're working on it we might get done by 2030 you know no concrete timeline it was all huge very ambiguous and that was nasa Right there. It's like, look, all the good stuff they've ever done. Remember I was saying that media is tapped out in just of every form. NASA was tapped out a long time ago. And now they're just making promises. Kind of like the Superman Batman movie where there's like, oh yeah, we'll have that done in 2012. It's like for five years later. That's what we're talking about. They have nothing in the future lined up. Everything that we saw, literally, remember we were talking about this earlier, where you got to realize that, and I didn't say this during my little monologue, the Saturn V rocket is technically an antique. It's 50 years old. And when you go in there, it's that's... It's an antique. And that was what? Is antique 50 years? 
Uh, I think in cars, it's 50 years. It's, it's a vehicle. You know what? I'm going to count it. Because even though, yeah, I know the last one was 72, the first one was in the mid-60s, and we passed that point now. It's so when they years. shoot a Saturn V rocket off, what's left after the flames die down? And now? it goes. Yeah. Well, the capsule. That's all there is. But there are no Saturn Vs left. That one in the hangar, yes. that's the only one left. Why is it left? I forgot to uh, figure out that question last night. As a memory. That's it. It's the So it's they the made legacy. one. And, and they never they shot it. never shot it. Right. So do you think that they never shot any of them? No, no, no. The rockets went up. The How rockets do we were... know that? No. Well, I guess they couldn't have CGI'd it. No, yeah. yeah the, no, they didn't the have technology, the technology. No. no, the rockets were built. So they built something that humongous and got it off the ground. But only for one specific reason. And that was as long as the rocket gets out of visual range and you see it go away, they say, yeah, we're going to the moon and back. Uh, we'll get back to you in another didn't week. Didn't anyone here in our live audience or watching this at a later date ever see the rockets go like this and curve and the question in your mind was why it does it look like it's coming down and then followed by well it's probably going up it's just a trick of perception i don't know i'm not a scientist that's mm -hmm. didn't anyone break through that brainwashing and say that rocket's going down no we didn't and neil degrasse tyson's explanation was he's going well it's so big and it has so much fuel the only place it could have gone is to the moon. He's saying it's so big. And I'm going with that sort of logic. <laughs> I have a full tank of gas. The only place I could go is from Houston to Colorado. Yeah. Yeah. I have a dump truck. <laughs> that's that's the back of it's full of fuel. I drove to Florida and back. Tell me how I, that didn't happen. It's like, it, you know, it's like, oh yeah, I got some pictures here and there. Oh yeah. Terrible pictures. Yeah. But I went. That's what we're talking about. It's also like if you put that much fuel in it, of course that's what happened to it. Maybe they didn't put that much fuel in it. There you go. How does anybody know? Yeah. How does anybody who helped build that thing, but who all compartmentalized, the, know? The other part, and by the way, I do not recommend in any way, shape, or form. Sorry, let me grab this right. I do not recommend any way, shape, or form that somebody actually go to this and pay thirty dollars a piece to sit there and sneak in. Yeah, and just sneak, to see the Saturn V. Sneak in and see the Saturn. Oh, it was awful. Well, no, no, Saturn V. Here's the best part. The Saturn V is free. This. Do you have to pay first? To no. Pay, to no, we it? could have driven all the way. They didn't check our thing on, on the dash That's or anything true. like that. Lack security, too. It says no firearms, no this. They didn't even look in my handbag. No cameras. No big cameras. And they said no selfie sticks. And mine no was selfie like sticks. prominently visible. Well, yeah, yeah. I we tried sh hiding it. We bit. shot with a selfie stick for, and that was one of the only four things. Like no guns, no heroin, no selfie sticks. And I don't think it was heroin. No. But... But PCP. we went exactly meth, no bathtub meth. <laughs> and we go and do our tour. We almost did the whole thing. And then finally, some kid, only because he was bored, said, Yeah, yeah, yeah selfie stick. Rah, rah, rah. And then he kept talking to his friends, and I just walked by with it. I said, what? Okay, thank you. Kept walking. Yeah, yeah. But I'm sorry, don't pay for this. Definitely don't pay for this. But the free one, the Saturn V rocket, is completely free. You have to go to the same gate that NASA employees go to which was weird in itself. It's like, what? And it's like, we, you would ask. It's like, yeah, we want to get over there. Oh yeah, just make a left-hand turn. He didn't even watch us. The parking lot for the Saturn V rocket only holds about 20 cars, which means no one goes there. But go there because here, here's the most interesting part. You have the banners, which are labeled on the side, like team championships. You know, Yes, uh, uh, it reminded me of team championships in the college, uh, on the walls, right. in the gymnasium. Right. Uh, um, and just about as dusty as well. Only Apollo missions, but because Saturn was only designed for Apollo. Apollo 1, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. But what is interesting is when you go from Apollo 7 through Apollo 17, the dates are so close to each other. It's not like, no, 1965, 1966. No, it's like 1968, six months later, still 1968. You know, maybe we'll get one more at the end of 1968. Oh, then, you know, by the time 1969 rolls around, you get to Apollo 11, which landed on the moon. All these were so condensed. And that's the part which so many people will miss, which is the Apollo program did all these things, all these round trips to the moon, right? Apollo 8 through Apollo 17 in a four-year window. All these boom, 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 boom. No problems. Nobody died. Nobody got injured. Nobody got cancer. No problems at all, except for Apollo 13. And they MacGyvered their way through it, and nobody still died. They should have been dead. I love that phrase, MacGyvered their way through things. Yeah. They did. Watch Apollo 13 if you get a chance. It's one of the only two moon movies that was ever based on a real story.
Apollo 13 was one, and the other one was uh, The Right Stuff in 1983. Sorry. Lots of funny comments and chats. Uh, Alex Aquarius is saying everybody just has one job at NASA. They don't even know how it all works. Brian McCarthy says, I've been hearing about Mars for 40 years, LOL. Can't believe people haven't figured out the reason for that. Nothing in tech in the last 40 years has stood still except space. Tech. Right. Yep. Oh, yeah. I mean, look at your cell phone. Look at what we're doing here. The future that we were denied, we only got the fra a fragment of, and that's communications. Mm -hmm. That's it. We don't have flying cars. We don't have phasers. We don't have a space program. None of that crap. Right, exactly. But it's great we have this technology. At least we can communicate our despair among each other. Exactly. Keep each other's spirits up as the world crumbles down upon us. I don't believe it does, though. I, I, by the way, I'm the one who's believing in hope and stuff about all this. Tamea says, uh, oops, it just skipped. Let me grab that. Um, Tamea said, the actual rocket is free, the Saturn rocket. Right, see. it's free. But the lies are what you have to pay for. Oh, that's Ooh, pretty it's good. interesting. I like that. Tamea's good one. Uh, o double... The leg says that he can see, he or she can see when I notice a message that's funny or amusing on my phone, which is true. I guess it was written on my face. She does not have a good poker face. No, I don't. Uh, uh, let's see. Alex Aquarius says my dad was working at Mission Control, so he got in free. Interesting. Nice. Because um, um, Alex Aquarius lives here in the Houston area, so. And I was watching some of his videos. Subscribe to his channel. You can see some really good um Hurricane Harvey updates on what was going on during the storm and after the storm, et cetera. That's Alex Aquarius. Um, let's see. Well, I'd like, I'd like to take that back. Just because his dad got in free doesn't mean it was a good thing. Got in free to the, the exhibits? Yeah, but I mean, as a, as a child, I think it was probably good for him. Yeah, that's fine. You know, I mean. Still global yeah. reinforcement. Yeah, yeah, true. true Sorry. True. This segment um, sponsored by <laughs> Illuminati. Bringing you smooth New World Order domination. Road FM is asking a couple of funny questions. Bling, bling, the VSS of the ISS. Uh, also, he's talking. Um, they're talking among themselves, which I really like that when people in chat <laughs> are mixing Don't listen to us. Yeah, no, well, don't. I mean, speak amongst yourselves. You know, this is, uh, you know, the conversations are sparked off what we're talking about. Uh, Irk Child says, I love that she used a selfie stick despite the posted rule. Flat Earth Anarchy. <laughs> she did. I'm going in with my selfie stick. Uh, we have Gem Panda who's That's joined us. That's why I do a stamp. Ribble. I'm going in <laughs> with the selfie stick like this. Never, <laughs> never mind the cameraman who bypassed the six thousand dollar fee. Oh, you didn't tell that story, did you? No, I didn't. What Are we allowed think? to tell that story, Daniel? Okay. Oh. <laughs> what are you, yeah. Gary, Rich, Mike? No, yeah. Caroline. Uh, no, it's just a story about bringing a camera into film there. That's it. Oh, Daniel says we can tell the story. Daniel can you Clark. Can here for a second so we can see you again? Because somebody might have joined right now and think we're just talking to an imaginary friend, which I do do sometimes. But in this case, he's, he's actually real. That's Daniel, Daniel Clark. Daniel J. Clark from California. Los Angeles, look him up. <laughs> do your own research. Ask questions. A lot of questions about Daniel. Yes. Cannot trust him as far as I can throw him. Again. Is that the most incredible? You love my pen. Well, you? I mean, how many pens are like this? It's you never even showed this on. Crystal. It's pretty. Really? Is that is it a like license? Yeah. Good lord. All right, come here. It's pretty. it's pretty. That way, if somebody takes your pen, you'll know. Hey, buddy, this is my pen. CGI ruler. Uh, yes. Tell a story. Oh right. Tell the so, story. Tell the story. No, no, no. You're thinking of meatballs with Bill Murray when it's like. Gossip, gossip. We want gossip. Oh my gosh, we don't want gossip. We don't. YouTube is a gossip cesspool. <laughs> <sighs> okay, so Daniel was. Did uh, you hear that one about the? And then she. Oh. Then did you see what happened when he? And I think they're. <gasps> and did you hear that she's got a fake? <laughs> <laughs> don't tell anyone. Just keep it amongst us. <laughs> keep it on the DL. Okay, so what happened was uh, Daniel decided, I, I think it's pretty funny, where Daniel decided to uh, call NASA up and say, hey, can we film there? You know, go on the up and up. Let's go legit, hashtag legit. And and he uh, he called him up and they said, oh, yeah, yeah, to film inside this piece of crap carnival reject. It's going to cost him six grand for the permit. And we're just kind of winging it, right? We get there. It's like, oh, bring a camera. And the security, and we, we look at the sign, and honest to God, the sign says four things, like firearms, 
heroin, selfie sticks, and I don't know, cats. You can't bring any of these things in. But I think pets might have been one of them, actually. And we walk in, and the security guard didn't even blink at the camera. Didn't even blink. So they, if Daniel had gone through official channels, he would have had to pay, or his company would have had to pay six six grand thousand dollars to yeah. get in to film. And we just went in. We just went in. And the best part is, no one cared. No one cared because there's nothing in their secrets. We went through the whole thing, spent a couple hours there, and the only time they complained was about your selfie stick. That cost six dollars at a drugstore. And the only reason they complain about selfie sticks. Is if there is a crowd, apparently get people get distracted and just start running into people. So being distracted and struck by a selfie stick is far worse than being programmed and brainwashed. Right. I guess. So yeah. we have a beautiful sighting on the jukebox. Scoot over here so everyone can see the beautiful sighting. She's pushing me away. You see that beautiful sighting right there? Yeah, that's Flynn the cat. <laughs> Well, I guess that's it for our show. I can't think of anything else to talk about. Can you? Uh, what, mo what movies are we going to watch tonight? Tonight, are we watching one one? We're going to watch two. Are we watching two? Movie seven? marathon. Eight, nine, two, one. So you go to the airport tomorrow. I'm taking you tomorrow at what time? Like eight or something? Seven, six? Are you going to make it? You, seriously? Of course I'll make it. All right, I have to be there at eight. Okay, so we should leave here at six. Why would we leave? It takes two hours to get to the airport? No, but you've got to be there ahead of time. And no, 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 no. Okay, here's the deal, guys. I right, so he's going to say this, but, and then we're going to be late, and it'll be his fault. What, 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 what Patricia doesn't know is I've already anticipated her time calculations into my calculations. So what I'm saying is my flight doesn't leave until 930. So I have to be, I have to be in there no later than 8. Which okay. means, how long does it take you to get to the airport? 45 minutes. All right. And how long does it take you to get ready? Don't answer that question It'll literally because... literally take me five minutes. It will require That's throwing amazing. clothes on. You actually said that straight face. Yeah, it's like throwing on some like... Seriously, it's like five minutes. You know, it's like, like a cup a, of coffee, Like a really. hoodie mm -hmm. and leggings and shoes. And go. Out of the 180... What, what show is this, by the way? 186. Out of the 186 shows, audience... How many times has Patricia been on time? Once, absolutely once. And it was only because that man was there with a camera. That's the <laughs> only reason. So that means I respect Daniel, but not you. And that's not even the reason why. Um, because Daniel came from elsewhere at that time and was here waiting. You were in the comfort of your house in Washington State. and You could do anything you wanted to do while you were waiting. Meanwhile, he was just like sitting in my living room. So I thought of his comfort and not yours. Sorry. I, and yeah, and that actually makes sense because here we were supposed to start at 5 central today and we started at 515 and I was still sitting in the living room. Right, exactly. Luckily, I was on set. No more reprimanding me, please. Anywho. You know why I grew up and became an adult? What? So nobody could tell me what to do. It's been a wonderful show. <laughs> Thank you for inviting me to Houston, to the Houston fun. Space Center it's been with, totally fun. with Robonaut and aging aircraft. Exactly. I want to say hello to a few more people, including D-I-T-R-H, who says, watch Wonder Woman. Lots of flat earth stuff. Mm. My mom was a huge Wonder Woman fan, so I'm going to have to Sorry, that one. Sorry, uh, let me do a quick thing on that. And that is, I highly recommend Wonder Woman the movie. You do? Yeah. And I'm not saying I downloaded it illegally using BitTorrent. But. All, all rates reserved. <laughs> but it, it's a totally wonderful movie. It's a great. It's probably the best DC movie they've made in quite some time. And if you're a fan of Wonder Woman, oh, absolutely watch it. It's great. All right. All right. Um, uh, Feral Feline Rescue and Foster Care has, speaking of Flynn on the jukebox and calls him a jukebox hero. Yeah, that's true. I like that song. Really? From Foreigner? Yeah, bling bling, the BS of the ISS says that you're going to miss your plane. She has no confidence. I know, I know. <laughs> I, I, I mentioned this to you guys in case it happens. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Let me follow the way. But I don't want to go. Can we just stay? You had a nice time, right? I did have a nice time. Yeah, I had a great time, too. It was pretty fun. A really nice time. Yeah. It was actually more fun this time than the first time that I went to go visit you in Seattle. Yeah. Area. No, this was, this Why? was, this was cool. 
Why? We did more interactive stuff. Right. Then we weren't really doing anything live. We, exactly. That's it. We weren't plotting as much uh, like we did back then. Feral Feline Rescue and Foster Care says, they never noticed I was late because they're always late too. There you go. It's my kind of people. <laughs> All right. You, you, I'll, I'll give you guys a quick secret. You guys want to have some in, an inside scoop on Patricia. Okay. Here's the deal. Mm -hmm. The reason why you're late. Mm -hmm. It's not what people think, actually. Oh, it's, right? it's what I think. Well, it's not what normal people, people think. think. A lot of people have thought or said, and I know DITRH is like, oh, she's putting her makeup on, or oh, she's doing her hair. It really isn't that. So I spend a lot of time doing other stuff around the house with the cats. And then I look at my clock and go, oh my gosh, I have only 15 minutes to get ready. I mean, you have. That's the answer you're going with? Well, you've seen it happen. The democratic response is. <laughs> is that there are some people out there that believe in the saying that you should be fashionably late. And I don't know exactly what fashionably late is in terms of minutes, but if you believe in it- 15, maybe. Like a, like a Bible literalist, there are people that take other sayings literally. So to be, if you believe that you should be fashionably late, that means you're fashionable. Should and I, if you're- I go sit in the corner? No, 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 you like this. And trust me, after I've seen this place, if you're ultra fashionable, that means you should be ultra late. It's all about showmanship, presentation, and entrance, as it were. Make right. So you're saying it's sort of okay as long as I don't hurt other people. Exactly. Thank you. Exactly. So the audience at the concert, we want a show. We want a show. <laughs> That's pretty much what Patricia hears in her ears all the time. No, it's not true. It is. Yeah. Screw the opening act. <laughs> I'll be on stage when I'm ready. Now she won't keep you waiting like Prince does, like uh, five hours. No, no, no. But she will make it. But it's because no, look, it's legit. She Good wants things take time. Fashion. There you go. <laughs> you, yeah, I'm sorry. It's worth the wait. Thank How's you. That? Right. <sighs> I'm only saying that because you're my ride to the airport. <laughs> exactly. It's been fun. I've always wanted to ask you if I could try <laughs> in your hat. Can I? You want to try? Yeah. I don't know. I've never worn baseball hats as a rule. Gosh, your head is big. This oh, out of me. Awesome. Great. Wait. What's this? Jaren style? Oh, yeah. Totally street cred. Or like, who wears a hat like this? Somebody? Oh, that's... No, isn't... Oh, who's the guy that dated uh, Britney Spears? I don't remember. Kevin somebody. You know, Daniel? Federline. Kevin Federline. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, we've had fun. We hope you've had fun. We're going to watch a couple of movies. Yep, a couple of movies. Dark City, I think, maybe. Are we going to watch Dark City? Are you going to eventually watch Maleficent? I want to watch Maleficent. We probably should. It's a happy ending movie. Okay. And, and really Maybe is. that would be the good one for before bed. And we can watch Dark City first. Since some of the scenes in the original Matrix were using the stage set for Dark City on the roof scene. And really? I, that you told I was me. about to say, you're stealing my <laughs> trivia? That's no, awesome. I'm crediting you. I'm That's crediting you. That's serious. This this movie review <laughs> sponsored by So that's what we're gonna watch. You're gonna make the popcorn. Illuminati with and that maybe Daniel will stay and watch a movie with us. New world flavor. Yeah. All right. That's it. From the three cats and from Daniel J. Clark of California. And don't forget Gary Rich, Mike, and Caroline. Hey, thumbs up, Caroline. And uh Patricia Steer, the Mark Sergeant, until we meet Ooh. again. And we will. We are going to meet again in person, if not right here online. Keep it flat. flat. <laughs>